Simon, if we could just start around a, a squad update. We saw pictures this morning, Caelan Doris sitting out training. Can you give us an update on what his situation is? Yeah, so he didn't train and that was the plan uh, the beginning of the week was just to, to manage him. Um, but, you know, we're, we're expecting him to train fully tomorrow. So there should be no issue with, with Caelan. Is, he, is there a specific knock he's carrying? He's probably carrying a few, but but just no more 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 bumps and bruises and and uh, I guess it's you know he, he had a few um, took a few hits uh, against Italy and yeah he's just in a he's in a good he's in a good place but but he needs to be managed in, in a couple of areas and we don't expect him um, we don't expect him not to be fully fit for the weekend. Okay, the other one then the big one Hugo Keenan, obviously. We've been talking about him for a week or so. How is he at the moment? Is he any closer to being available? Yeah, so available? he's good again, and and I think again he's sort of sort of similar to to Kalen. Um, you know, Hugo's been such a massive part of of this group uh, since he he first made his his debut a few years ago. So, um, you know, it's important that we we try and uh, give him the opportunity to to prove his fitness, um, but. You know, we're really excited as well about the opportunities that that might present. If he doesn't make it, then um, we feel really, really excited about what what's to come in and the opportunities that other guys will get to uh, to step up. In a situation like that, like how long would you generally give a player before making a call? Uh, yeah, you probably. I mean, it's it's more than likely tomorrow. Um, you know, for, for someone like for like Kalen in particular, you know, you'd, you'd be. You, know, you wouldn't want to leave it too late. Um, you'd also want to make sure that you give the guys that, that potentially do start then the opportunity to to um, get time in the saddle. And, and you know, it's important that we we uh, we grow the squad and grow the the um, experience that the guys will have. And and um, that's the case for you know Kalen's position and Hugo's. And just finally for me then, in terms of Wales um, and from your defensive side of things. What did you see from them against England? That if you kind of create a way to trying to get around England's rush defence, what have you been looking out over those first two games? Yeah, I mean, I think the other than the first forty odd minutes against Scotland, that you know they've been very good with ball in hand. They've created opportunities. Uh, they are they're able to keep the ball for long periods, uh, which can make it frustrating and it, and it can make it uh, challenging uh, that you don't sort of stray offside or, or give away something stupid and needless. Um, so they're, they're threatening. And then, like you say, against England, against a strong defence, they're able to, to pick a few holes in that defence as well. So, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm not expecting anything different. I think they're, they're a good team. Uh, they actually, you know, they went to Twickenham and, and were maybe unlucky not to win the game. And certainly in the last um, 20 minutes of the Scotland game, you'd, you'd imagine that, that all the momentum was with them. And again, they, they, they could have. They could have. They could be two from two. So, yeah, it's um, it's been a real challenge for us, making sure that we're uh, we're strong both sides of the ball. But defensively, they'll they'll pose loads of threats. And they brought Sam Costello back in, a bit more experience at ten, uh, with Johan Lloyd on the bench, who who I think has had a you know he's a fabulous footballer and adds a little bit of another dimension to them off the bench. So, can I just ask about Hugo? Was he was he there? Was he training? Yeah, so he was there today, but yeah, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't taking part in in the session. Uh, also, saw so Ian Henderson was um, there, but not. Yeah, training. yeah, yeah. So Henley, Henley's still been assessed. Obviously, he's played more recently on the weekend against the Ospreys, so he's still been assessed for um, a foot injury, and and he's just yeah, we, we're, we're again like leaving him a little bit of time to uh, those sort of injuries take probably a little bit longer to settle down, and then um, the assessment will probably be done along with the other guys tomorrow. Yeah, he's good. Falls is is really confident, and he's you know he's uh, he he'll he'll often cover more than one position, fifteen, ten, twelve. So um, I think when he gets yeah, someone like that, they they have to be um, really competent, and he is. You know, he's he's really um, he's given guys a lot of confidence um, in the back, and he's. He's got um, a real good way about him. You know, he's he's quite unassuming, but he's he's really confident and he's um, he's composed. Uh, you know, he's and he's he's kind of really thriving in that position. And and uh, I think he's um, he's a player that has been on the radar for a while. And we know that opportunities have maybe been a bit short for him in terms of his position at Lens to be moved around a little bit. But certainly, is a is a player that we would. Um, 
we'd be really keen and excited about seeing at 15. I saw you had Daryl Gorman in with the squad, was that today? Um, I just saw the clip that I suppose it looked, looked lovely. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, for the squad and yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, obviously, he'd gone over to Liverpool, hadn't he, and, and met um, Klopp and... Uh, I think was it Diaz was his favourite player, and uh, it turned out that Bundy was his favourite player here. And he got him up, uh, Bundy up to present him a shirt. But it is a lovely kid, and, and the whole family was was lovely. You know, he, he's a he's a great supporter. He loves his sport. Like, he's so knowledgeable, and and uh, not just rugby, but um, other football and American football. So yeah, he's real. He's a real uh, character, and it was great to have him involved. Unfortunately, we got Fogs up to sing, uh, sing You'll Never Walk Alone with him, which um, unfortunately Fogs' memory must have slipped him, so he struggled a little bit with the words. But it was great that you know, the squad really enjoyed having him in, and, and um, it's people like that that give, give the players um, you know, the inspiration to go on and, and uh, perform because he's, he's been through a hell of a lot in, in a short life that he's, um, yeah, he's a real inspiration. He's rare enough to, to nail a team. Do you get a massive bonus for, for doing that? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it is rare, and it and it's it's something that you know we've um, we've certainly spoken about. But it's yeah, I guess we've um, when when you do that, you you know you you got to make sure that you put it in context. I think we pressurized Italy. Uh, I don't think they were at their best, and I think you know when you look at what. Uh, Wales did to Scotland in the second half, Wales did to, to England at times in, in Twickenham, then you have to make sure that you, your feet stay on the ground and, and you keep trying to get better and it's great that we uh, we didn't concede against them um, but we also know that there's, there's a far sort of harder test to come um, but the players were, were great, you know, they, they I think Part of it, probably, um, like, like anything, it, it's got to start somewhere. And, and part of it was the, the set-piece defence was excellent. And then when you take away that platform for any team, ourselves would, would be the same. You know, it's, it becomes much harder to, to get the flow into your attacking game. And our set-piece defence was, was outstanding, which allowed us to, to grow defensively and, and not give them any access. So it was good. Like when an attack coach is reviewing, there's obviously loads of highlights. What do you think that you folks on? Um, I guess things we've worked on in the week, which are you know being disciplined, not giving them any access into our. You know, they, I think that the closest they got to our try line was 15 meters, so they didn't get those types of uh, kicks to the corner and, and get their more going. Um, so the, the discipline, um, discipline within um, sort of the referee, but also discipline within our system as well. And and I think all of those things kind of contribute to. To making it hard to, to play against us um, for Italy and yeah it's I mean there's 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 little bits along the way that we would have um, sort of identified when we were playing Italy that we might like, do differently to, to when we we're playing Wales and and so on every team has slight um, sort of intricacies in their attack that we want to try to to nullify and and I thought we did that well as also so it's probably a combination of things it's not always um, it's not always clear and obvious to to the sort of uh, to the, to the public, but I think there's lots of really good positive bits that we did really well. But there's also bits that that we can be better at, and we'll have to be this week. Can I just ask, do you have like a defensive captain or a kind of group that you want that? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say we're we're there's more sort of contribution from leaders within the the team, and that that would allow us sort of across the board not just to have one or two guys that are leading it. It'd be be a few guys in that leadership group that would have a, a kind of a role within that um, that defence. And Ireland struggled in the World Cup now since then he won all 26 um, in this campaign. What's kind of made it click between the team so far? Um, well, I think you'll have to ask Paul. <laughs> Paul, uh, in terms of what we're doing at the moment, we're not doing a huge amount different, to be honest. Um, Sometimes you come up against a defence that has has kind of figured out a little bit of what you're trying to do, and that makes it harder to win the ball. Um, but I think the the consistency of the drills that that uh, Paul and the and the um, the players are doing um, over the last few weeks has, has has kind of allowed the the foundation to be really strong. And if you get your fundamentals right in whatever sort of area of the game, but line out in particular, there's lots of moving parts. A lot, and, and sometimes a hooker might get criticised for the throw or 
you know, rarely is it probably the lifter or the, you know, the movement. And so there's, there's lots of things that go on. There's loads of moving parts to a line out. And I think probably simplifying that uh, since the World Cup has allowed us to be really, really effective in, in our ball winning and also the, the, the mall attack as well. And that's something that probably is, has contributed to, to the, uh, the success of the, the Six Nations so far. Uh, I think every week there's a huge focus on our set piece line out and scrum and, and the, there's a real appetite for uh, fleshy for the scrum not just for the front row or the front five but the whole pack as an eight um, you know the, the nines get involved in that as well uh, Fogs has, has I guess um, grown that appetite over a period of time of, of understanding what it gives to, to us as a team in terms of a platform, but what it takes away from opposition as well. So again, our set piece defence was really good. Scrum and line out was really good defensively. And again, we take that off the opposition. That means their foundation is is weaker and, and then we can be more aggressive potentially in our, in our phase defence. So a lot of good, strong, uh, consistent work gone in, uh, probably World Cup through to the Six Nations in the guys in the front row working together, but their connections with the locks, their connections with the back row, and and I, I think you're only as strong as your weakest link. Um, but sort of set piece is is definitely one of those, and scrum is is um, without doubt. You know, if one guy drops out for a fraction, then you know it can make that that scrum uh, struggle. So I think the the connections that they they built have been um, have been sort of clear to see in the performances.